Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the Native News Update. It's Wednesday, May 2nd. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Santa Clara Pueblo's members have voted to grant membership to the offspring of Pueblo women with men of other cultures. But exactly what that means is up to the Tribal Council and may require other membership-wide votes. Before this vote, Santa Clara Pueblo recognized as members the children of male members, even from mixed marriages. But the offspring of Santa Clara women with men from other tribes or men who are not Native American did not automatically gain entry. The 14-member Tribal Council, made up of six elected tribal officers and eight council representatives, will decide how to implement the vote later this month. About 800 of the approximately 3,000 people who live within the boundaries of the Santa Clara Pueblo are registered members. Governor Walto Deschino said he did not know how many members are likely to be added to the Pueblo rolls because that depends on how the membership rule is rewritten. For example, he said the council may decide to add as members people who have a single grandparent previously recognized as a member or even people whose family ties go back further. The Goodwill Industries of Western New York, who receives 50,000 pounds in donations per day, has discovered a vase in their warehouse that could be anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 years old. A note inside the vase said it was found at the Spiro Mounds in 1970. Dan Victory with Goodwill Industries of Western New York said they did research on the mounds to discover that it was an old Indian burial grounds in Oklahoma. Victory contacted the Oklahoma government, who directed him to officials with the Cato Nation, who then laid claim to the vase. Victory said they will be donating the vase to the Cato Nation Museum. The Suquamish tribe held its first Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event on April 30th. Cecilia Williams began the tribe's sexual assault program in 2008 and with the help of the North Portland Area Indian Health Board brought the National Walk a Mile program to Suquamish to raise awareness. Getting men involved is what is going to bring around the change, she said. The 30 men and women who walked from the Longhouse to the Tribal Administration Building and back in red high heels turned the heads of many drivers on the road. Domestic violence and sexual assault is a problem for women everywhere, but studies show Native American women suffer at some of the highest rates in the country. Native American women have also reached the attention of the federal government when last week Congress passed the Reauthorization of the Violent Against Women Act, which first was passed in 1994. The reauthorization of the bill includes the ability for tribal officials to charge and prosecute non-Indians who live and commit crimes against women on tribal lands. Since the act became law 18 years ago, domestic violence has decreased by 53% nationwide. Nelly Furtado has released a new behind-the-scenes peek at the video for her latest single, Big Hoops, Bigger the Better. The track that was released digitally in the U.S. on April 17th is the first single off her upcoming album, The Spirit Indestructible. The new clip, the third in a three-part series of behind-the-scenes videos on Big Hoops, features Furtado practicing with the world champion Native American hoop dancers. Like Alright guys, let's rock and roll, let's do it. Alright. Time release the fresh. Spirit Indestructible, set for release on June 19th, is Furtado's fifth studio album, which she said is all about positivity, youth, good energy, and the relentlessness of the spirit. Native American Lending Alliance and EverFi announced the launch of a new financial literacy program that combines the latest in new media technologies, gaming levels, 3D environments and adaptive pathing in an effort to provide the best comprehensive financial education in schools in Indian country. The decision to fund this three-year initiative came with a unanimous vote by the Native American Lending Alliance Board at their most recent meeting in Washington, D.C. The financial literacy program aims to teach, assess, and certify participating students in hundreds of different financial topics. 
With this initiative, NALA and EverFi aim to provide comprehensive financial education while establishing a high standard that will have lasting social benefits in the Native American community. The program will launch in three schools located in Montana, Louisiana, and North Dakota, and expand in other schools and states in the coming months. Benny Marchant's newest single, Back to Life, has been chosen to be played in the release of the feature film, Crooked Arrows. Directed by Steve Rash and starring Brandon Roth, Crystal Allen, Gil Birmingham, among others, is about a mixed-blood Native American eager to modernize his reservation. He is tasked with coaching the reservation's high school lacrosse team, which completes against the better equipped and better trained players of the elite prep school league. Back to Life is the title single for Marchant's new LP that will be released on September 17th. And that's the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.